Hello all, so now I'll be discussing an important Python function that is mesh grid. So it's inside this numpy uh, computation module of Python. So let's see, it's a very useful function and we'll see the application at the end of this video. So I'm using this uh, Java T point website just for explanation purpose. So all credits goes to this Java T point. So you can see here that in mesh grid there are a couple of arguments. So there are some optional arguments. So we'll see all of them step by step. So let me just uh, take my pen for the annotation purpose. So let's see. First argument is the arrays. That is we are given. We'll give arrays. You can give n number of arrays in here. And this is the compulsory argument. The other arguments are you can see here that indexing and it's optional, right? So sparse is also optional. So we will see all the stuff step by step. So first of all, let's start with the thing that what this function do okay so you can see here that this function now let me remove this notation first now we'll see all the arguments step by step so starting with the compulsory argument so first of all let's discuss what this line space will do so it's very easy firstly you can see our na is 5 here and our NB you can see is 3 here, right? It's just the assignment operator in single line, right? So NA and NB are 5 and 3. Now this line space will do is that it will assign to A. You can see here that A is assigned something by this function. So between 1 and 2, right? And what is NA? NA is 5 here. So it will generate 5 points between 1 and 2 and including 1 and 2, okay? So 2 points are already included, 1 and 2, that is at the end. So 1 and 2 are there at the end. Now total should be 5 points. Right. So and all points should be equidistant. That is consecutive points should be at same distance. The difference between two consecutive points should be same throughout the array. So obviously it will be then 1.25 then 1.5 and 1.75. You can see all are equidistance and you can see total number of points are 5. Right. So this is what this line space will do that's it now b you can guess what it will do between 1 and 2 it will generate 3 points because nb is 3 over here right so 2 points are already there so we just need 1 point in between in order to have total 3 points so obviously to have equidistance it should be 1.5 so we generated our two functions that is a and b which is generated by this line space. Now let's see what this will do. That is np dot mesh grid a and b. So we are giving arrays as, as I said, we can, you can give n number of arrays here. We are giving two arrays, right? So you can see that in here, let me just remove the stuff for good explanation. So I am just keeping a and b. Okay and rest I'm removing. So this is A and this is B. Now you can see that first of all, let me just write A and B again. So 1, 1 1.5, you will get in a minute why I'm writing it again. 1.75 and 2 and the second, our B is 1, 1 1.5 and 2. So this is how I wrote. Now this will be, what will be this point? This is our x axis, you can consider it like this, and this is our y axis, right? So, what will be this point? It will be nothing but 1, 1, right? Second point will be 1.25, 1. 1. Third point will be 1.5, 1. 1.5. 1. 1. Fourth will be, sorry, 1.5, 1. 1. 1. Pardon. Then fourth will be 1.75, 1. 1. 1. And fifth will be 2, 1. Similarly, this will be 1. 1.5 this will be 1.25, 1.5 this will be 1.5, 1.5 then it will be 1.75 and 1.5 and this will be 2 and 1.5 and similarly you can write for the third one as well so just let me change the color for better explanation so you can see here that what this xa will be now this xa will be you can see here the color is not visible I think let's take blue and you can see the first coordinate that is the x coordinate 1 
1.25, 1.5, 1.75 and 2. You can see it will be this. Right. Similarly, the second all x coordinates we are taking again. So all x coordinates both are the same only and the third as well that we didn't write. But this thing. Right. So three times we are getting this and this will be our x a. And now you can guess for xb. xb is nothing but obviously the y coordinate. So it will be, let me just have some different color. So it will be this thing, the y coordinate that is 1, 1, this is also 1, 1 and 1. So you can see here we are having 1, 1, 1, 1 and 1. Then 1 1.5, 1 1.5, 1 1.5, right? So you can see here we are having 1.5. And the last we didn't wrote but it will be 2, 2, 2, 2 and so you have you can have two here so now you can get what this function will do this masquerade function right now let's see all the arguments step by step the optional as well so for that let me just remove all the stuff and let's go about in the argument section so first argument was our arrays which was compulsory so we gave array as our a and b this you can see but now what we want is indexing. So let me explain this indexing. So the default is Cartesian that is x, y and you can specify the matrix indexing as well. So it's nothing but like let me just have one matrix. So you can we know that these are rows. This is first row, second row, third row and so on and these are columns. So it is first column, second column, third column and so on. So this point will be like uh, first row and first column. This will be second row and first column, right? This is first row and first column. This will be second row and first column, right? Now, on the other side, you can see we have our Cartesian coordinate system, which have x-axis and y-axis, and any point here will be this point will be x comma y. So our x here is this horizontal thing, and y here is this vertical thing. But in here, if we take this coordinate then our first coordinate is nothing but for y because rows are giving the vertical displacement right in matrices and columns are giving the horizontal thing horizontal displacement right and that's why you can see that we have two different indexing system if we use matrices then we have to flip right both are other way around it's for this rows are you can't say that rows means horizontal rows means vertical right and here the first coordinate is of horizontal but here the first coordinate is for vertical and that's why we have two different indexing and by default is our Cartesian one right that's it now sparse we will see in example and let's see and copy I will just read it that the aim of this optional argument is that it returns a copy of the original array for conserving the memory that's it and by default it's false so there is no need now let's see for the sparse so as you can see first that we are getting this thing a and b that we already saw but now what if we give sparse as our argument you can see here that sparse is our argument so in that what we will get at the output is that we are just getting a single thing you can see here that instead of getting you can just compare the outputs that here we are getting rows the same row three times but here just we will get once and similarly here we will get 1 5 times 1.5 also 5 times and 2 also 5 times but here we will get just for once you can see 1 1.5 and 2 and this is the role of this sparse that is we are not uh, getting the dense representation we were done when we do, don't want this dense representation you can give this argument sparse as true right and by default it's false now you may ask what is the application of this function so there are several application one of them is here in here that is it's already given that here np dot arrange so let me just tell you what this arrange function will do so between minus 10 to 10 right minus 10 to plus 10 it will generate the points with 0.1 difference that is it will be minus 9.9 .9 and so on right this is the step size you can say 9.8 and so on it will go until plus 10 right minus 9.8 of course it will go like this until plus 10 now again we are generating our sparse representation 
using mesh grid function and we are storing it as x k and x b. Now we are giving this x and x b as an argument to this sine function and then we are plotting this sine function that's it okay in the range minus 10 to 10 so that's why in a to b range and z that is our function the sine function so you can see we are getting a sinusoidal function this is nothing but our polar plot you can see x square plus y square right so this is kind of a polar plot control right so there are other applications as well one of them i can tell you in computer vision so in computer vision we are having uh, several applications one uh, now i can remember is this one in our motion estimation right we have forward warping right image warping we are having so in image warping in order to have forward warping and backward warping that is inverse warping we are using the interpolation right and for that firstly we need to have the coordinates okay in order to have interpolation and that's for that purpose this mesh grid is used right so if you want this video on computer vision let me know okay i'll give you entire thing with the code i'll explain it so i hope this video will be helpful for you thank you thanks for watching